कृष्ण हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 सो वी फिनिश अप द चैप्टर कृष्ण कुमार वर्सेस 22 थ्रू 29 द पीस formula so there's a formula for peace an intelligent person does not take part in the sources of misery which are due to contact with the material senses in other words sense gratification you enjoy sense gratification for a little while but what happens sense gratification does not last Sukha, material pleasure, is not ananda. Ananda is eternal. Sukha is temporary. So any kind of sense gratification, your ears, eyes, nose, tongue, skin, gen, any kind of material sense gratification, the happiness is there, but it doesn't stay. And that's why people become unhappy. Because... you want that happiness but right so the first the first time the person smokes the cigarette he gets some happiness he thinks but now he has to do it again and again and again and again and then lung disease he becomes addicted right same way with drinking they drink okay nice now i want another but there's what what are they looking for they're looking for that high they're looking for that pleasure but now you have to take more so now you need two drinks to get to that then later on now i need a bottle just like yesterday i went to the store to buy something the grocery store and there was the guy ahead of me some old guy three what would what was he buying for his lunch three big cans of beer and he was bragging to the guy this is my lunch <laughs> big three big cans <laughs> so all the material senses are like that you chase after this happiness but becomes illusory you're chasing after you're chasing after you've heard me say 100 times person makes a million dollars now i want to he's never satisfied i have a billion now nah, that's not enough because this other guy has 10 i can't i want to be the richest man but you're still only going to eat six chapatis <laughs> whether you have a million dollars or 10 dollars that's right and then yes yes even having all that money you have so much anxiety because someone is going to try and take it the government's going to take it this guy's my enemy is going to take it there's no end o son of kunti such pleasures have a beginning and an end and so the wise man does not delight in them so here's krishna's argument what's wrong with sense gratification such pleasures have a beginning and an end and so the wise man does not delight in them nothing stays before giving up this present body if one is able to tolerate the urges of the material senses and check the force of desire and anger he is well situated and is happy in this world so here here is free will here krishna is pointing out it's up to us that's our end we have to learn to tolerate the urges of the material senses the senses are pushing rupa goswami says bacha vegam manasa krodha vegam jiva vegam udara pasta vegan these are pushings urges and what's a goswami can tolerate control them not give in just like classic ekadasi i don't know about you but whenever ekadasi comes all of a sudden now i want to eat rice 
All the other days of the week, rice is okay, nice, but, but kamakadasi, ooh, I feel like having rice. <laughs> Why is that? <laughs> because in the mind it says you can't eat today. Yes, yes, but I have to control it. I don't know for you, for me, kadasi is hard. Because I see all these, oh, mmm, mmm. Or John Mastami, you're fasting all day. By <laughs> two o'clock. Oh my God. I'm not going to last another minute. Ugh. And then you see from the temple all the mahas coming out and you're going, <gasps> wow. Then four o'clock comes. Four o'clock? I thought it was at least eight. Then eight o'clock comes. It's not midnight yet? Ugh. Then all of a sudden, midnight comes. Now I'm not hungry. <laughs> it's so bewildering. It happens every time. Up until midnight, it's like, <gasps> then midnight comes. Huh. That's how Krishna works. Very mysterious how Krishna works. So you learn to tolerate the urges and check the force of desire and anger. For instance, when uh, Brigu was sent by the sages and demigods to test who is supreme. So he went to his father, Lord Brahma, and didn't offer obeisances. Brahma immediately got angry, but he checked himself. Then he went to Lord Shiva and criticized. And Lord Shiva was going to get angry, but... Parvati checked him. All right? He went to Vishnu and stepped on his chest. And notice how Vishnu spoke. Oh, did you hurt your foot? <laughs> then Brigu could realize, here is the Supreme. Because even I kicked him, he didn't get upset. In fact, he was thinking, oh, he said, Vishnu said, oh, my chest is so hard-hearted. You are a pure Brahmin. Certainly you must have hurt yourself on my chest. Just then Brigu went back and said, as far as I'm concerned, Narayan Vishnu, he's supreme. He's always Shanti, Shanti. I don't know about you, someone kicks me. <laughs> I'm going to get very angry. And you would too. Right? It happens in the kirtan. Somebody stops, hey, what are you doing? You know how it happens sometimes in the kirtan. Somebody steps on you. Yes? Mm. And he was kicking and the whole, all things were going on for him. So the hundred times that saintly person came Ekna and he said, if your tummy is okay, <laughs> let's go home and I'll give you honey so you will feel better. So yes, yes, similar. Very good. Okay, next sentence. One whose happiness is within who is active and rejoices within and whose aim is inward is actually the perfect mystic. He is liberated in the Supreme and ultimately he attains the Supreme. So what is the Supreme that we want to attain? Yes. The spiritual sky, Vaikuntha, 
which we will get now because we did this fifth chapter of Bhagavad Gita. Yes, we want to go back home, back to Godhead. That is our supreme. It's not to come back and take birth in Placenti or Irvine or Roland Heights. That's not our supreme. Or take birth in Trump Tower. Our supreme is to go back home, back to Godhead. Those who are beyond the dualities that arise from doubts, whose minds are engaged within, who are always busy working for the welfare of all living beings, and who are freed from all sins, achieve liberation in the Supreme. So I mentioned this last Saturday. Devotees work for the welfare of all living beings. We are trying to give Krishna to everyone. That is our job. We want to see that everyone becomes a devotee, following in the footsteps of Prahlad. Prahlad told Nisringa, I do not want to go back alone. I want to take all these fools and rascals with me. And Prabhupada was the same way. That's why he created ISKCON, so that so many people can have the opportunity to go back home, back to Godhead. Yes. Good. Those who are free from anger and all material desires, who are self-realized, self-disciplined. So see there again, self-discipline, that's up to you. You have to discipline yourself. You can only teach your children so long. At some point, they have to learn to be self-disciplined. They have to get it, that it's in their interest to be self-disciplined. And constantly endeavoring for perfection are assured of liberation in the Supreme in the very near future. Shutting out all external sense objects, keeping the eyes and vision concentrated between the two eyebrows, suspending the inward and outward breaths within the nostrils, and thus controlling the mind, senses, and intelligence. The transcendentalist aiming at liberation becomes free from desire, fear, and anger. So we get the same, because that's the yogi, we get the same benefit chanting Hare Krishna. Hare Nama Eva Kevalam. We're going to get the same benefit as this yogi simply by concentrating on chanting nicely every day. Get the same benefit. Because Lord Chaitanya says, Cheto darpanam marjanam. You cleanse the mind. Bhava maha nirvapanam. Bhava maha davag. You extinguish the blazing fire of material existence. If you extinguish the blazing fire of material existence, you're liberated. So this is the second benefit of chanting. You become liberated. You extinguish the blazing fire of material existence. Simply by chanting. One who is always in this state is certainly liberated. Final verse. A person in full consciousness of me, knowing me to be the ultimate beneficiary of all sacrifices and austerities, the supreme lord of all planets and demigods, and a benefactor and well-wisher of all living entities, attains peace from the pangs of material misery. So that final verse is the actual peace formula. So let's go over what we have to know. So number one, full consciousness of Krishna. Always being conscious of Krishna at all times. Now what does it mean to be Krishna? You are the supreme lord of all planets and demigods. That's number one. That's what it means to be God. That's why we're not. We don't own, even own our own city. Right? But Krishna is the, um, what does it say, ultimate? Okay, it says here, the supreme lord of all planets and demigods. So all the demigods are under Krishna. Some people don't like that, but that's what Krishna says. I am the supreme lord of all planets and and demigods. No exceptions. Everybody's under Krishna. 
beneficiary of all sac in other words a beneficiary is the person who gets the benefit so all sacrifices and austerities that we're doing is for Krishna's benefit then number three the benefactor so if someone is your benefactor he's out for your interest benefactor somebody who's interested in benefiting you so although Krishna is the ultimate beneficiary he is also the ultimate benefactor it's reciprocal and well-wisher well-wisher is means the dear most friend the one again who only is out so that you're happy attains peace from the pangs of material miseries Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 you have a question Krishna Kumar oh I thought you had a question all right so we have time for some chanting <laughs>